Whoa. Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. Welcome, everyone, to our program today. Yes. And uh, we have Colonel David Giamano back with us today. Yes. And Troy Anderson. So With good. the new book, The Military Guide to Armageddon. It's number one already on the bestseller list. Mm -hmm. Just out. Just out days ago. And so this is what's amazing. And this is a good book, Mondo. And Lori, it, absolutely. absolutely. I what about love it. it. Mm -hmm. Every what about it, Lori? Word. You're I'm, the book reader in the family. Well, I love it. I love the the how practical it is. I love how they go into the spiritual depth of of life, mm -hmm. and how we need to be prepared in these last days. Mm -hmm. We keep we've been saying it for quite a while now. We are in the last days, but we are in the last of the last days, and That's to right. be. To be spiritually prepared and to be physically prepared is of the utmost importance. And mm. we have we have an expert with us today with a, the colonel, and he literally has lived it. He's trained. He's taught us. He's an R a U.S. Army chaplain, mm -hmm. so he understands, obviously, the spiritual side of it all, but the practical side as well. Mm -hmm. and, and this book takes you step by step. And it, it just tells you exactly what to do from a strategic standpoint. Show the people the back of the book. Yes. We are at war right now, the back of the book. Seth. And have, how long have I been saying that? You've mm. been saying it for quite yeah. a while, honey. Yeah. And we are at war. Mm. The war of words. Yeah. They literally have s censored mm -hmm. the president of the United States. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the president used Twitter as one of the main outlets to communicate with you, with us, with the people, with the media. He would speak to the whole world first, to us, you, us Absolutely. normal people. We, got, I, we all got firsthand what was in the mind of the president that morning, in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, in the middle of whatever you were doing. Why are they so afraid of the president they, that they would... They'd go that far. You know, the they've power, lost billions of dollars. Billions, absolutely. And I think the left has made a mistake because the right is saying, well, we'll just cut them off. You we're, know, we're just not going to go to those places. Absolutely. You know, the president changed the way business was done the moment he decided to run. Everything that was designed for a politician to use in his politic. Uh, politi uh, political career, he broke that mold yeah. and he began to use the platform ho for his benefit. But that platform uh, decided to deplatform uh, the president, and then partner was the platform. They just cut it right off. They yeah. wiped it off completely. Amazon and, and because Google. Because the, the server that server had to use yeah. Amazon and had to use the others to go uh, to to build their platform on. Absolutely. And we're watching major. Let me give you a headline. AR15.com site the platform by Gold Daddy unannounced. AR15.com. What does that mean? I don't know what that meaning means. Meaning that this website sells rifles, sells uh, guns. Yeah. And they, big tech company, feel threatened uh, that this company is inciting war. So any, the banning of guns is next. Is absolutely. the headline? Absolutely. Let me let, let me just take you into what this website uh, is talking about. This is the headline: Biden calls to defeat the NRA. A warning for all gun owners. Talking about. This is the headline: Biden calls to defeat the NRA. A warning for all gun owners. And this is a warning. And that's that what they did in Russia. That's what they did in the communist countries. Let, let me give you another headline. This is a communist party takeover, end of quote. This is what, what? He's, he's warning. The CEO of Overstock.com, you remember that? Yeah. He's sending a big warning saying this is a communist party takeover. And I don't have time to go through the full article. Communist party takeover. And I don't have time to go through the full article. You can research it for yourself. Please go to it. Get familiar on what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This is not some average Joe talking. This is an Overstock CEO understanding 
against the way business is done in America, but is warning that this Communist Party takeover is taking place right now. <laughs> Let me give you another headline of what's taking place uh, right now. If you don't think the war is towards the president is real, wait till you hear this headline. Uh, this is according to the mayor de Blasio saying New York City is looking to cancel business contracts with Trump organization. Mm -hmm. What they're trying to do that, what, what does that mean? They are trying to blacklist the president and the organization that he represents all across the board. There's another one. So they're uh, going to try to. To back blacklist him blacklist from doing him any business and in the United States. Him. One of the websites right now, if you know, the president is known for his golf. Yeah. Well, one of the organizations is trying to blacklist the president's uh, golf course from being used with the PGA Tour. That's a lot of money for that, that organization. That so what you're seeing is a blacklist across the board, and these people decided to start at the top. That means it doesn't get any higher than the president of the United States, and if they can do it to the president of the United States, Believe me, they're going to do it to you if you're a conservative uh, organization. And they are not uh, talking to you by letter anymore. They're not calling you anymore. They are doing it without asking your permission. And we are seeing that all across the board. Let me give you a headline that I think we covered yesterday, but it's so important you understand what's happening uh, to do it. Payment. This is according to Braybart.com. Payment processors strip blacklist Trump campaign. What does that mean? That means that the Trump campaign will no longer be able to accept donations by credit card. They are literally stopping all the payment processing services by blacklisting that organization. Banks are doing it. Radio owners are sending a clear message and statements to their hosts to not talk about the election anymore. Do not talk about this is a false election and, and, and a stolen election. If they are, they are going to be taken out. And we're watching people being the platform slowly and I'm telling you, this is a clear sign and a warning. Uh, let me give you another one by Big League uh, Politics. Steve Bannon, one of the biggest names in politics. Steve Bannon, War Room Channel, Yank from YouTube. This was one of the highest rated uh, YouTube channels in that platform. And it was yanked immediately just by talking about what happened at the Capitol the other day. We're watching... Uh, this movement taking place, but at the same time, you're watching states like Idaho. There's an Idaho company, a Wi-Fi company that blocked Twitter and Facebook from being used in their services for banning the president of the United States. And they say, we're not going to release your, your access to our consumers until, until you give access back to the president of the United States. You talk about what's happening right now. I, if I read you this headline, it's probably going to shock you. But this is what some of the people are trying to do. And they are considering, listen to this, Homeland Security Chair pushes for Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley to be declared terrorists of the United States of America. Oh my. Is that shocking or not? Yeah. There's another one. Alabama Tea Party member, and I quote, if they feel threatened now, wait until we come back. And you're watching this unfold right before our eyes. But we're watching uh, America in probably one of the most unprecedented times in the history and the church has been asked, there's been an alarm that has been sent by many leaders to open up your churches now before it's too late. They are warning the church to open now before it's too late. I'm going to ask the colonel to comment on these news headlines. And this book is written by them for this hour, The Military Guide to Armageddon. Yeah. So we're grateful to have our guest back again today. Yes. And Colonel David, could you please share what you feel about 
what's breaking news right now. Oh, thanks, Jim. And by the way, uh, talking about guns, I'm a federal firearms licensed dealer. So uh, I do know quite a bit about guns and uh, state regulations and all that. But here's in any war, uh, you go back and look at the history of modern warfare or even ancient warfare. The fact of the matter is this, that uh, there's information wars uh, going on, uh, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan. There was lots of dis disinformation wars going on where we put out all kinds of propaganda to confuse the enemy. The enemy of our souls, Satan, is, you know, I've got to go back and tell you that Joe Biden, the left, and all this, all these people, uh, Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, they're not the enemy. They're pawns of the enemy. And so Satan is using them in a disinformation war. Uh, when you go to warfare, you use all the power necessary to win the war. It's just not about ammunition and guns and beans and bullets. It's about soft power. And we have to really understand soft power in the church. Soft power means it's information flow. It's uh, doctrine. It's uh, many other things, uh, diplomacy. It's uh, money. It's funding. There are so many ways that we could be attacked and we can attack the enemy as well. So those headlines are not surprising. And in 2021, things are just going to go worse. Uh, and, and that's good news for the church. God is trying to wake the church up. And the only way to do that sometimes is through pain. Uh, we've had it easy long enough, and now it's time to arm up. It's time to ammo up. It's time to get on our feet and go forward. So what Mondo is talking about with these headlines, whether it's guns, rights taken away, all these things are going to spin out of control because the left, the government, is wanting to take away all of our rights, and they want to spoon feed us these regulations. But I don't think the believers of the Church of Jesus Christ are going to stand for this. We're going to rise up. And there is going to be revival. And there is going to be a breakthrough. But Satan knows his time is short. He knows that, you know, what he has to do, he has to do quickly. So things are starting to ramp up right now in a lot of different are uh, arenas. But not just here in America. We have to also understand that the Bible is a Middle East-centric book as my friend Joel Richardson talks about all the time. And what's going on in Israel, what's going on in Iran, in Iraq, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, all those things are significantly going on, and Satan is throwing smoke screens around the world to throw that us into the fog of war, as we talked about in our last show. We've had so much turmoil lately, physically, spiritually, politically, that if something else happens— some experts say America, as we know it, cannot survive. What are your concerns about the future of freedom and democracy? Well, uh, and, and Troy will probably chime in. He's an expert in this arena as well. But you're exactly right, Jim. Uh, other things are going to start happening, and not just in the political arena, probably in the physical realm as well. Uh, natural disasters disasters are also going to hit us as well as political. You know, there are many, many levels of, of uh, warfare that are going on right now that's leading us really to what happened in Germany again in World War II. We talk about that in the book pretty extensively. But what happened in Germany in the Treaty of Versailles in World War I, they gave up. There was a peace. They took all of their freedoms from them. There was economic disaster. All these things started happening in Germany until a man came on the scene named Adolf Hitler. And he promised the people jobs, money, strength, uh, ability to work, all the, a great army, a great military, and world domination. And that's what he gave them. There's a man coming that's going to put the world together and give us all the answers we need if we'll just trade our freedoms in for security. That's what's going on in the United States right now, and it's a prelude to what's going to be happening in the future. You're talking about the Antichrist. Yes. Yes. Troy, could you answer some of this that I uh, mentioned a minute ago? Do you believe 
the, that you're, are you concerned about the future of freedom and democracy? You know, Jim, I've been a journalist for uh, three three decades, and I've never seen any kind of uh, a threat to our freedoms and democracy here in, in America like is going on now. Uh, you know, in our previous books, uh, I wrote with Paul McGuire, The Babylon Code and Tripocalypse, uh, you know, we warned of this, that, that there would come a time when we'd see the, the loss of freedoms, this push towards a socialist, even a communist kind of government, and we're now seeing this unfold here in the United States. You know, many of the things that happened in the, you know, communist uh, uh, Russia and in, in Nazi Germany prior to the rise of Adolf Hitler, we're seeing many similar things happening here as these headlines uh, demonstrate. And so this is a, a, a great time of uh, a threat to our, our freedoms and our democracy. You know, the church has been closed down in, in many places. Uh, we're watching these, the a loss of the you know, freedoms that are enshrined in our constitution and in the Bill of Rights and in our First Amendment. And so uh, the reason why we wrote this book is we wanna wake up and prepare the church for what's happening. We wanna to try to quickly get the church, uh, you know, what the military calls battle ready. And, uh, and the, the greatest weapons the Lord has given us is, is our spiritual ones, you know, prayer and Bible reading and fellowship and in drawing close to the Lord and, and walking in the supernatural power, protection and provision of the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's the central message of the military guide arm again, is what we need to get ready for, for what's, uh, what's happening now. Yeah, so powerful. You know, I love in the book how you have um, different strategic spiritual exercises, which is of the utmost of important. And um, on page 113, you talk about ask God to give you wisdom that pertains to building vision in your life. Read wisdom scriptures. Yes. I just love that. And you give some of those wisdom scriptures in here. Find a spiritual mentor who will inspire you, in, in, invigorate and instigate vision in, in your life. Study the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts. You said develop a library of books that speak to you regarding vision and insight and determine what God has for you to accomplish and then set about that, going about that. And I know God has for us to win souls. Amen. That is, yes. the, it says in Proverbs, those who win souls are wise. Amen. Colonel, socialist conservatives are sounding alarms that a Biden administration might be inclined to let the pro-abortion socialists in the Democratic Party restrict religious liberties. Do you believe this is fueling heightened interest in the end times? Well, Jim, I spent eight years in the military, most of those years at the Pentagon under the Obama administration. People don't realize Barack Obama was probably the most corrupt, underhanded politician of our time. And, and I say that unequivocally. Um, the things that he did underhanded, everybody thought he was a nice guy and he was a real, but it was, that's nothing uh, farther from the truth. The fact of the matter is he tried to single-handedly demolish the military. He uh, did all kinds of things to trip us up and to not make us battle ready. And so he opened Pandora's box as a prelude to what's going on under the Biden administration. We're going to see things in the Biden administration that are going to make Barack Obama look like a Sunday school teacher. Uh, he, uh, first of all, Joe is aligned with the globalist elite. He wants a one world government. Uh, back in 2012, when I was in the Army War College, every single book I read in the War College talked about a one world government as the only answer to the world's problems. Joe Biden's going to take that, and he's going to not only restrict religious freedom, because as Adolf Hitler knew, and other dictators have known in the past, if you have religion, you have churches, they're going to uh, come against your agenda. So he's going to restrict uh, all kinds of freedoms that uh, people are going to be amazed at, including abortion, pro-abortionists. Uh, you're going to talk about people who have supported Trump in the past. They're going to be targeted. There's all kinds of things that the Biden administration is about to do that uh, if, you know, people were told, they would not believe it, but it's going to happen, and it's going to happen in, in, in the time to come. Troy, recently a New York lawmaker introduced a bill calling for detention camps for disease carriers. 
Do you think Christians and other people of faith could face persecution in America like many people are facing in nations around the world? Yeah, Jim, I mean, this was a, a stunning article about this this New York lawmaker that proposed the detention camps for disease carriers. Only time will tell if this bill actually gets passed. But, you know, I mean, essentially it sounds like if you have COVID or maybe something else, they could put you in a detention camp. I mean, this is unprecedented in American history. Uh, you know, we saw things like this in World War II, and we see these things in China today and that kind of thing. But to introduce this in a d democratic country, in a free country, is, is just is stunning. And so th this is a, a shot across the bow. This is a warning to the church that Christians, we really need to wake up that, you know, the time is short. Uh, you know, I, I've interviewed over 200 experts in, you know, faith, Bible prophecy, in every field you can imagine over the last decade investigating this question. Are we really moving into the end time events that the Bible talks about? And there's pretty much overwhelming consensus on both sides that, you know, this is really happening and there's great dangers here. And, th and this bill is just one example of this. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's why we wrote this book. We want to help wake up and get the church ready, get believers ready for what's ahead. And, and the Lord tells us he's given us many different tools you know, that help us, you know, navigate this time. You know, nobody knows exactly how this is all going to unfold, but it certainly seems that everything's lined up now. And uh, we are moving into this this time of, of you know, approaching the, the Great Tribulation and ultimately, you know, the Battle of Armageddon and, you know, and the, our blessed hope, the return of Jesus Christ. So, you know, it's very important to get ready and, and to do the Lord's work, win as many souls as we can with the time we have left. Colonel, talk to us for a minute about the calling you have to wake up the church in America. Where does this come from? Why is the church in such need of revival today? Well, Jim, when I first got in the Army, God called me. He called me supernaturally. I was at a Marine Corps base in California, Camp Pendleton, sitting there with my wife, a young minister, and a voice out of the blue said, you're going into the military. And 32 years later, here I am. Uh, I went to the almost the highest reaches the military uh, had to offer. At the end of that retirement, uh, 2018, I went to Kerrville, Texas. There's a prayer garden there that has a 70-foot cross. The Lord directed my wife and I to go there. I went to that cross. It was a Texas pretty blue sky out there. And the Lord told me to look up. And I looked up, and there I, in, in the cloud was the lion of the tribe of Judah, perfectly formed lion. No, no, other, no other clouds, no other things in the sky. It was, it was right there in front of me. And the Lord spoke. He said, I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am calling you to prepare my church and warn the world for my coming. Well, I don't think you need a clearer voice of God than that to start marching to what God wants us to do. And so I was obedient to that vision. I finished writing The Making of the Warrior, which is now the military guide to Armageddon. And so the Lord has said to me many times and to my staff and, and our board, the church has been asleep. I've talked to many pastors across the nation. And Jim, you had said it a number of times. They don't know what to do. But the Lord is giving us clear guidance. That's why we wrote the book. This is what God is asking the church to do. It's time to stop just going to church and then going out to lunch and having your Sunday nap. It's time to get battle ready, because we are in a war that's going to continue through 2021 and beyond until the rise of the Antichrist and then his destruction with the return of Jesus Christ, our blessed hope. The reason we wrote the book is now is the time to prepare. So I have pastors calling me. Uh, I'm scheduled to, to teach this course. Uh, I'm scheduled to, to teach this course. And I, we have put two-day curriculums together. We put a three-day curriculum together of what it means to prepare and be battle-ready. And hence, that's the reason we're on this uh, show today and many national and regional ch shows across the country because God has opened the door for us to do this at this time, just like Esther, Queen Esther, for, for such a time as this. This is the time. There is no more time to lollygag. There's no more time to be coddled. It's time to, to get the soldiers ready for battle. 
I like what John Piper said in a quote from in Desiring God. He said, on the top of my agenda these days is to get the church ready for war. There are a lot of people, he says, that are asleep around the general's tent. And it's time to wake them up and get them into the battle before the battle is, uh, is lost. And that's what God is doing right now. Wow. Yeah, that's so mm. good. So good, Colonel. And I in chapter nine is called boot camp. Yes. And if there was ever a time that the Amen. we all need to be in boot camp, it is now. And we have to learn. You talk about learning the basics. Follow followers of Christ, you write, must train this in the spiritual disciplines that are are present in the word of God. We need to stay focused on what scripture tells us yes. to do. And you go on to say, read the word daily and do all these other things. And you say that, you know, in my personal opinion, this book, if you need to get it for yourself, but you need to get this for your pastor. That's why we have the yes. three military guide to Armageddon book, um, offer available for you because your pastor needs this book and he needs it or she needs it now. You you said right here in the strategic spiritual exercises, you say, take a hard look at where you're spending your time during the day. Yes. What, what you do reflects who you are and what is important to you. Discipline is a key word. Find out what that means in your life and how to grow into, into that. Commit to both spiritual and physical exercise. Read and study those who have mastered the ba uh, the basics in their life. Basic training, uh, boot camp. Remember that doing something over and over and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. You know, uh, Nina, our new studio, we broke ground yes. this last week. I believe we need to be able to open that studio soon. Yes. We can build it fast if we have the money. And that's the new studio. We've never built a studio here, really. We, we have our studio is on Gray Street, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is yeah. in the middle of the big building. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we want to be able to go all night if we yes, have to amen. with teaching and yes, preaching and that's all. It. And we got people living in the balconies, yes. you might say, mm -hmm. of, of Main Street. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be able to have a building that is for teaching. Yes. And wouldn't it be great to be able to have the colonel yes. come yes. Amen. help in the beginning open up this new studio Amen. with a seminar yes. on amazing. the Military Guide to Armageddon. Yes. yes. Amen. Where he could teach our people mm -hmm. in person. Yes. And so that's that's something that's very, very, very important. Now, we're asking people this month to help us mm -hmm. that's get right. those walls yes. up and Amen. get that studio going. Amen. Yes, we're asking you to join us to partner with this ministry, Morningside USA, as we have broken ground. You've watched it these last couple, several days, but you can be a part. Don't miss mm -hmm. out has been the word that's been spoken mm -hmm. over every single one of us. And so you can be a part by joining the Hall of the Prophets for an $80, $81 offer. And that's an honor, Dad, of your 81st birthday this year of 2021 for a donation of $81 love gift. You'll be a partner in joining us to help us build the Hall of the Prophets. And in return, we always want to send you a gift. We want to send you two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs. We also have $500 Groundbreaker member. That's $500 donation. And you'll receive one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mug along with the beautiful PTL Voice of the Prophets blanket. And right now, if you're feeling led, that $1,000 Hall of the Prophet Groundbreaker Gold member, and you'll receive two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs along with two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blanket. We want you to call us right now and be a part of what God's doing here at Morningside. Yes. This can be something that you sow into the yes. kingdom of God that Amen. is going to have benefit yes. to so many people and to yourself. Amen. I believe this is God's time yes. that we don't stop. We must do it now. Yes. We must do it now and start this thing and get it finished before the enemies take over. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to ask a question of the colonel, which I'm almost af afraid to ask him. 
<laughs> but I'm, I'm going to ask him anyway. But please stand with us. This broadcast center that you're calling it will be what you wrote about years ago, places of refuge where voices like the Colonel and Troy and voices like the Jim Baker show could be heard from and be able to transmit the signal and understand that unless we own this platforms, there is no, we're not going to have a, a, a weight in this battle. If we don't build this platforms of the PTL network, you won't be able to hear. That's not a fear mongering. That is a warning to understand that your donation is going to a place that will help us broadcast this voices around the world in real time. Our ultimate goal is to have this build so we're not blacklisted. Understand, this is so real and it's happening so fast. Well, I love what, what the Colonel and Troy say in their book, and this is towards the end of the book when they were talking, which we talked a little bit about yesterday with D Diedrich Bonhoeffer and uh, Reese Howells and Corey Tim Boone, who, who, you know, back in the, in the day, um, whose family saved Jews during the Holocaust and became a hiding place in the midst of the dark hour. We need to be those kind of people so we can study some of these great men and women of recent history. We can learn how to be, here it is, lighthouses and cities of refuge yeah. in the days ahead. Yeah. And the following tips will help you prepare for any number of calamities. The thing is, honey, you, Jim, you've been saying cities of refuge yes. for years amen. and there it is yeah. right there on yeah. page 227 that's right. amen it's pretty and that's powerful. what we've been building that's yes right. that's right and others amen. have yes mm -hmm. we're going to be quiet about a lot of it but it's it has to be i'm very concerned and uh, colonel do you think that this could lead to a physical war of guns, warfare in America. Jim, I've been to war. I've seen it firsthand and what it can do. Jim, I've been to war. I've seen it firsthand and what it can do. Let me back up before I answer that question to give you an insight of what I did, to, what the church should be in these end times in, in, in physical war. I was doing chapel in Baghdad uh, during OIF and soldiers would come in to the chapel fully armed for warfare. And we would preach the gospel to them and do a service. And while we were doing that, they laid their arms down and they worshiped the Lord. And then they picked the arms back up and went back to war. That's the image of the church that we're trying to, to get to people, that we have to be warriors. There's no time for us to be on the sidelines. We have to do everything possible. To answer your question, you know, People don't realize this, but more soldiers died in the Civil War than all our other wars, including World War II. Over 600,000 soldiers died in, war, in the Civil War in America back in the 1860s. I hope to God and I pray it doesn't come back down to this. And that's why I'm saying that we need revival. We need repentance. We need the church. We need the ministry. Because if the church was not asleep right now, we wouldn't be in this mess that we are in. We're in this mess because we're in this mess because people, preachers, are preaching feel-good messages, self-help messages, all kinds of things that tickle their ears, but they're not preaching the truth of the gospel. And that's what the world wants: the truth of the gospel. They don't want mamby pamby religion anymore, and it's not going to hold up with this generation. So yes, it is possible, but we will have a physical, real war in the United States of America. But I pray and hope to God it doesn't come to that, because I have seen what war does firsthand to people. And uh, it's not something I want to see happen on these shores. I want you to get this book, Yes, The Military Guide to Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Brand new book, bestseller. 
and it's something we've got to stay informed. We've got to know what God has spoken to yeah, his people. Yeah. Amen. Very, very, very important. Troy, more people are hearing about what the World Economic Forum is calling the Great Reset of Capitalism. What is the Great Reset, and what does it have to do with the end times? You know, Jim, uh, last summer, Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum uh, announced the, the Great Reset of Capitalism. And, uh, and with all these different details about what this is, and then uh, Archbishop Carlo Vigano issued a letter shortly before the presidential election, open letter, warning that this is a essentially a, a proposed health dictatorship. And he actually warned of these detention camps that this New York lawmaker has now proposed a, a bill for. And he said that this is all sort of fits together. And so while you know we won't know exactly how this fits in the Bible prophecy until it unfolds, it certainly seems like this is the the, pre, the prelude to the rise of the Antichrist system. That's the, the great concern. You know, many different uh, Bible prophecy experts and others I've interviewed. That's the, the the concern they all share about what's happening now. Uh, you know, there's 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 asymmetrical warfare going on here, and there's a great you know uh, deception. And so the Bible told us this kind of thing would happen before you know we enter into the the tribulation period. So so that, that's why we wrote this book is to help wake up the church. The Great Reset is being rolled out this year and. Davos, Switzerland, they're going to announce the details of this. You know, it's connected with the United Nations Agenda 2030, and many people are concerned this is a, a push toward a world socialist system, or maybe even a, a totalitarian type of system, technocracy and, and different uh, uh, concerns about, you know, the use of artificial intelligence and, and all the new technologies and how this fits in with, you know, big tech and the censorship and all these things happening. So this is a time that it's really important for the church to wake up to, what, to what's really happening uh, and, and we're watching this uh, all unfold now so that, that's what the, the great reset is yeah wow is the great reset a sign that we are in the last days I mean, you know a little bit more on that because we're hearing so much about it mm -hmm. is it a sign of the last days would you repeat that yeah jim i, I think it is a, a sign of the last days uh you know, uh, for, for, for decades now, uh, the, the elite have been pushing us towards this, this you know, world socialist system. You know, as, as the colonel mentioned, you know, that they, they learned in the military that the ultimate goal of the elite is to create this one world government. And, of course, the book Revelation tells us that the Antichrist will preside over a, a one world government. He'll, he and the pro false prophet will implement the mark of the beast system. And so there's also great concerns about, uh, you know, what, what kind of technologies we have today, all the microchip implants and, and, and digital passports and all these different things. Could this be a prelude to this system where you can't buy or sell unless you have this this mark and so yeah there's, there's just unprecedented uh you know things happening that align with bible prophecy i mean for the first time in history we now have all the technologies you know artificial intelligence the surveillance state microchip implants all these different things that for the first time we could actually see this mark of the beast system so so there's, there's, there's great concern that we're we're moving into this time that jesus and the prophets uh, told us would happen at the conclusion of uh, human history guys please order this yeah. mom grandma <laughs> order this get some for your neighbors your friends your children your yeah. grandchildren when you order books from us you're supporting the ministry yes i would say a big percentage of our income comes from books we don't mean to have that happen it just happens yeah and the great books that are being written right now are important and it keeps us on the air. That's mm -hmm. right. But it also gives you information. Build your library. Mm. This is a last day library. This, and this is an essential book. It really is. To be in your last Amen. day yes. um, library. Absolutely. I keep thinking I ought to send out a bookcase. So you, have a book. <laughs> <laughs> you can go go down to the Goodwill, go down to mm -hmm. the used store, what, mm -hmm. go in and, uh, or down to Walmart, but get a, <laughs> get a bookcase for your books mm -hmm. because this will be your lifeline in the last days to read about 
what is going on right. in the yeah, world. Absolutely. And this book is really a training manual. This book will tr teach you and train yeah. you. And that's why I keep saying, you get, get it to your leaders. Get it for yourself. Give it to leaders in your life, be it your pastor, your Sunday school teacher, whoever it is in your life. And I like what the colonel said. You know, it's this feel-good message. I mean, it's just not going to cut it anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's this. this we have to have yeah. these serious books like this to teach that us are and based train on the us. Word of God. That's They're based it. on Amen. the Word of God. That's right. And it mm -hmm. says here this training manual. This book right here, a training manual. Yes. That's so powerful. Um, will teach you to counter the darkness of approaching end time forces mm. and develop your spiritual gifts so you can walk in supernatural power and protection of the Holy Spirit. Move into a new level of spiritual warfare following biblical and military principles and prepare for the intersection of biblical prophecy with real-time world Events. Time for the church. I'm sorry to, but I want to tell you something. What he said, the the reset, the reset, the great reset that they're planning, is changing culture so fast. But it's changing the way religion is going to be placed in this great reset. How are we to worship? How are we to go to church? How are we to believe? Who should we believe? And if the church is always 30 years behind. We have the access for information at our hands to be able to catch up. Imagine what we can do with the vision and the and the great dreams of God with the information that is available for us. How do we move? I listen, I, I, I respect you so much because when you say don't go there, we don't go there. You see things in the in, in God's supernatural that it's amazing how you're able to move ahead of the stream. Well, the Great Reset is starting to make decisions for the church without the church being involved in this decision making. And if we don't have the strategies to move when we need to move, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. And I'm telling you, this Great Reset is setting the markers for Christianity to be accepted or to be rejected in the culture right now. And when you hear the colonel saying that this feel good message will not, will no longer be able to be accepted. It's up to you what you accept in your home. You challenge our family to read the book of revelation for ourselves, to study the book of revelation. And if you, and I'm not trying to promote this, but maybe I am, you need to get dad's, Insight revel Revelation Revealed in your home right now and get this book and get the headlines to understand where we are. But more than that, how do we prepare for the time not to come for the time that we're in right now? Because this great reset is not happening in, in the future. This great reset is happening right now and where we are in the middle of that change that shift the president donald trump i think gave us four years of recession to be able to plan prepare and protect our homes now how do we prepare listen i i don't know about you but you're sounding the great alarm dad that if the church doesn't stop playing games we are going to be caught unaware in this great reset that is taking place in this world. And this program right here has been warning for the last 18 years to get your family prepared. Not in the future, but now, now, now is the time to the get The headline right here today, the World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative. Troy, tell us more about this Great Reset. We already talked to you about it, but I, I, I'm concerned. People don't understand what it means, this Great Reset. Please explain it a little bit more. Well, well Jim, uh, you know, one of the most surprising things, you know, I've been a journalist for three decades, and, and for most of that time, you know, journalism, you know, the mainstream media has always been fairly liberal, but just in recent years, it's just been an unprecedented uh, shift into what President Trump called uh, fake news. And so as part of this, there's almost been a blackout on, on news about the Great Reset. So many people haven't even heard about this, and yet it, it's openly described on their websites. Uh, you know, the World Economic Forum openly lays out all the details of this. You know, 
Time, Time Magazine actually had a cover story called The Great Reset. So there's a lot of uh, talk about in Time Magazine. And then Prince Charles came out and, and made a statement along the lines of, you know, this is a, a sort of an unprecedented opportunity to, you know, change change the world. And so the, the elite are very open about this and have actually been very open about it for many years. But the media doesn't really, you know, except for this Time Magazine piece, doesn't really tell us what's really happening. And of course, they don't tell us what the real implications of this is. And so I, I've investigated how does this fit into what the Bible tells us will happen. And so there's, there seems to be very close parallels. And there's there's literally billions and billions of dollars being spent by foundations, think tanks, everything you could possibly imagine to, to manipulate the public, to, you know, get us to accept this, to ch change, sort of flip the Judeo-Christian foundations of America. And perhaps we're now seeing the final stages of this plan being rolled out in what they're calling the Great Reset and everything that's happening in, in politics and culture and entertainment and, and business and, and big tech. So, you know, th this is a great threat to the freedoms and democracy that we've enjoyed in America. So, so we're hoping to uh, awaken the church, get the church ready, get believers ready, teach them how to walk in the supernatural power and protection of the Holy Spirit, because that's going to be critical as we move into these last days uh, uh, events. Wow. <laughs> wow. The Great Reset, is, it's in the news now. Sure. And the reset is to write out the church. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Absolutely. To redefine it. Colonel, is the only real hope for America spiritual awakening, which I would say yes, but I I'm, I'm want you to answer that. Well, Jim, the fact of the matter is I, I have to agree with one of the greatest evangelists the world has ever seen, Billy Graham. He said that, and uh, he said it uh, through millions of people around the world. You know, we could, we could have the greatest government, greatest education, greatest churches, but if it's not real revival, if it's not spiritual, if it's just form of religion, then nothing really is going to take place that's going to change anything. The reason we're in the mess we are today is the church has decided not to teach the Word of God as a whole. They've been teaching all kinds of uh, social things, uh, you know, semi-spiritual things, but they're not teaching the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ from A to Z. And so without teaching that truth, this is where we ended up. In fact, uh, you know, real people don't realize, going back to Adolf Hitler, who is a type of the Antichrist, do you know which book he was reading so that he could persecute the church, the, the Jews? It was the book of Martin Luther, who was a great reformer in the 1500s. But Luther hated the Jews, and he has a whole book on how they should, we should persecute the Jews. And so Hitler held up that book and said, this is the reason why we need to persecute the Jews. The church is directly re responsible for the hatred you know, of the Jews and what was going on because of Martin Luther. And even today, you know, many in the church are siding with the left, and it's not spiritual. It's not grounded in the Word of God. It's not God's order. So we're reaping all the things that we have sown. But your, the, the answer to your question is absolutely yes. We need to have a spiritual revival, an awakening, a power of God, a, a glory of God. The church needs to be re-fired up. There needs to be healing. There needs to be power of the Holy Spirit, miracles, the whole nine yards. Because the world is tired of just our rhetoric. They want to see the power of God in action. And that's what's going to happen, I think, in these last days. Amen. I want everybody to order the book. Yes. Lori, what happens, do you know, at the end of every Yes. Chapter. I love it. The strategic spiritual principles. And one of the chapters, we haven't even touched on so many of these, these topics, but I love this chapter on Spartan warrior training. That was powerful. And at the end of that, you talk about the strategic um, uh, spiritual principles. And I love this. You said purposely set aside time for being alone with God and yourself. Try fasting from television, movies, news, sports, social media, or something else for a week. Seek times of fellowship with yeah. other believers. Study scriptures that help you nurture humility. And you give us the scriptures in here and ask God to help you carry out 
his divine purpose for your life. This is why every single person in the sound of my voice needs this training manual. Yes. This, we call it a book, but it's a training manual. And this will help train you up to be that sport, Spartan warrior it, that is just so powerful when you study that. Yeah, Colonel, why is it so important these end of the chapters, mm -hmm. uh, so important, the strategic spiritual exercise? Well, Jim, in many books, and let me just say this, preface my remarks by this, this is not just a book. This is the a movement of God this is uh, what God is speaking to the United States of America right now and around the world. I've had some really great pastors tell me here recently, God has told them not to build a congregation, not to build an audience, but build the army of God. And that's really what this book is all about. And at the end of every chapter, it's not just words, it actually gives you the exercises, the principles, not just by the Bible, which is the most important, but what the army uses in actual combat and warfare, and it translates those principles into our lives and everyday living. It's time to stop just listening to sermons, listening to other people. It's time to implement reality into our lives, and that's at the end of every chapter, Troy and I and Chosen Books decided at the end of every chapter, we need to put these principles and we put these questions and these ways of living at the end of every chapter to empower you to become the warrior of God that you are called to be, much like King David was a warrior. And we talk about David throughout the whole book and the principles that David used to become the warrior of God, is, it's in the book as well. Yes, amen. Well, this is an amazing wow. book, an amazing tra training manual, yes. and an amazing movement that the church must yes. have for yes. today. Yes. Everybody needs to get at least one book for $25. That includes shipping. Everybody needs to get at least one book for $25. That includes shipping and handling, or you can receive the three the the three military guide to armageddon books for sixty dollars which includes shipping and handling and yes, or yeah. that's right we have the baker's dozen 13 of the military guide to armageddon books 13 of them for 200 dollars donation that includes the shipping and handling get prepared church we just have to say get prepared be ready get your food if you haven't already now is the time take this window of opportunity to get your food and get your family prepared remember we have so many offers on the website jimbakershow.com but if you can even do one one bucket one prepared pantry 60 mil bucket that's 60 mils for a hundred and fifty five dollar donation to the ministry that includes the shipping and handling start somewhere start somewhere right now call us at 1-888-988-1588 go to the website jim baker show where you can browse and figure out what is the best option for your family that's right and you can still write us at p.o box 7330 branson missouri 65615 yes Oof. Is famine coming according to the what you're reading worldwide? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's already there. Already isn't there. It? It's, oh, the stage is set. Yeah, so it's time to be prepared with food Amen. as well. Yes. That's oh, just part of being absolutely. ready That's because it. it's going to be hard to preach and minister yeah. mm -hmm. when you're starving to death and mm -hmm. your children are starving to death. Let's have our supplies. Let's, you know, our house and be our prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the seeds that the we send out, I, I know mm -hmm. we keep them in stock yeah. all the time. It's but that important. keeps so like when we, you have a crisis, right. you can plant your food gardens. Mm -hmm. So do you still have seeds in the yes. factory? Yes, we still have the <laughs> seeds available. That's the legacy heirloom seeds. And then, of course, with that offer, you're also going to receive the medicinal seeds as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And that there's so many. I mean, there's huge variety of seeds included in that offer. But this offer, when we talk about the seeds, it's actually enough to be able to share even with friends and family. That's the legacy heirloom seed offer for a $114 donation. And that includes the shipping and handling. That, that's the 
the medical seeds. They call yes, them right absolutely. Now. Yes. Yeah, medicinal. <laughs> yeah, start getting ready because time is <laughs> going by fast. And I know I'm already preparing. I'm starting my inside. I'm starting to grow things. You yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared. That's right. Amen. So good. Amen. Amen. But everybody ordered the book. This is the last time. So everybody ordered the book, The Military Guide to Armageddon, for only $25. That's right. And the Lori's offer... Yes, I love the friends and the family. There's always somebody that comes to mind that would love to learn and to be trained by these two experts that know what they're talking about and um, have put it into words. So you can get the three Military Guide to Armageddon books for $60 donation to the ministry, yeah. and that includes shipping and handling. You're or keeping the ministry on the air. That's, that's right. And yes. you're being a missionary. Uh -huh. You're giving a... You got three books, mm -hmm. one to keep, two to give. That's mm -hmm. it. To your best friends or your best enemies. Yeah. I mean, you just, <laughs> you, they need it. Uh, Whoever needs them, this book. Amen. Them with tools. Amen. Yeah. Oh, so we want to thank. We want to thank, thank, we wanna thank our Colonel. We're calling you our Colonel. Now. We want to thank Colonel uh, David Giamana and also Troy Anderson. Thank you for writing yes, this book. Thank you right. for putting it down so practically. And it's very You know, deep people say it can't happen. But, you know, Corey Ten Boone, who prophesied that the gospel would come from right here where we are sitting right now, she that sure the great did. move of God would come and it would go to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How could she know? Mm -hmm. They didn't even have an airport here except a, a dirt <laughs> one. Time, yeah. And and she landed that, had them land the plane. That she, mm -hmm. she was flying in a small plane. Yes. And she said, right down there. But what was she doing during that before? She was underground mm -hmm. yeah. keeping the Jews from being killed. That's right. And so it's happened yes. before. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. The hell that the enemy has planned mm -hmm. for the church. And if you read the Bible, you know it's not going to be Sunday school picnic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very difficult time. So that's why I'm happy to have someone write a book yes. about the military guide to mm -hmm. Armageddon. Amen. Order it now, please, 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 please. I have to go. Please order today. Please stand with us.